Choose service over self-interest. We have been very fortunate to have a really, really cool contract for about 25 years. We get the chance to work with the United States Marines. We teach Marines who have been identified to go on the recruiting duty assignment. We teach them communication skills and presentation skills. One of the things that I know through our 25-year history in working with the Marines is they are among America's finest for sure. And part of the reason why they are that way is because they come into a deeply rooted, committed culture of individuals who know it's up to them to do whatever it takes whenever they are asked to do so. I love one of their ad campaigns. It says this, we don't accept applications, we accept commitments commitments. When you are hiring people, are you accepting simply a person, simply an application, or are you looking for a commitment? A commitment to a bigger, deeper rooted cause, a commitment to giving them an opportunity. Are you interested in them participating in a long term, a medium term, a short term partnership with you? Are you interested in having them reflect upon their experience with you as one of the best employment experiences ever, ever? If that's your purpose, if that's your goal, I guarantee you will be a very different business leader if your goal is to have them look back on their experience with you as the best they've ever had. That's gonna change the way you behave each and every day. Those Marines are trained, are inspired to believe that the difficult they can do immediately. The impossible just takes them a little bit longer. They believe it. They believe it in their head and they believe it in their heart. If your people were trained to believe that the difficult they can do immediately, the impossible just takes them a little longer, a little bit more brain power, a little bit more time, a little bit more creativity, Think about what they could accomplish. And then they accomplish that and watch out because you're building confidence and you're building success in your business. So what does it take to build that kind of culture of commitment and accountability? Not just hiring people who have commitment, but when you hire those people in in the first place, then you have to do whatever it takes to re-recruit them. You can't just assume that when you bring someone in, they're good to go. You've got to re-recruit them on a daily, if not moment-by-moment moment basis. And the examples that I have to share with what it takes to re-recruit people has everything to do with time. The way you spend your time absolutely matters to your people. Jenny Allen is a great example of a player who's willing to play hard, and every time she plays hard, her goal is to hit a grand slam, to hit it out of the park. Jenny Allen happens to work for a competitive property here in San Diego. She sells meeting space, meeting space for a living. She has only been doing it for three years. Jenny's sales goal, she's on a team of 20 people, so she's one of 20 people. Her sales goal for the year is to close 7.4 million. Last year, Jenny closed 12 million. Not bad, she's only been in the business for three years. She's considered green by her colleagues. So she's closing almost double her goal. And you know what her closure rate is? 100%. And you know how she does it? She's shaking it up. So when the director of the National Ski Association comes to San Diego in August to visit her property, Jenny greets him in the lobby in full ski gear. So she's got ski boots, ski pants, ski jacket, gloves, hat, everything right there to greet him. And then she takes him for a visit, a tour through her property. First she issues him a lift ticket through the property. And then she shows him the green rooms, the blue rooms, and the double black rooms. So she is hitting it out of the park for this one potential client. When a law firm 
decides to come and check out her property. Jenny escorts the attorneys to a room, a box, that has been reconfigured to look like a courtroom. She sits them down and then she ushers in members of the jury, all members of the hotel staff. So she ushers in the chef, people from banquets and catering, security, human resources, parking, reservations, and they get to tell their story about how her property is going to hit it out of the park for that one meeting. Jenny Allen is, is shaking it up. <laughs> her colleagues aren't doing that. I want you to transfer the Jenny story to your business. Are your people willing to get into my head when I walk through the door? If I need something, if I need a couple of pieces of lumber, and I'm simply escorted to where I can find that and get it cut and sized to my specs, and then I'm out of there, having paid for it, off to do my project, is that enough? Is that hitting it out of the park? No, I think that's barely hitting a single. I need someone, if, if, if you got a Jenny Allen working on your team, they're going to find out what project I'm in the middle of. They're going to find out if I've ever done it before. They're going to find out if I've got help. They're going to find out if I've got everything that I could possibly need, which is what you've been talking about all week. Well, <clears throat> extraordinary things happen. You will get people to want to come more often, want to stay longer, and want to spend more when you give your people the freedom to do and act like Jenny Allen does. <laughs> you just will. Is Jenny Allen an extraordinary person? Her team, the other 19 people that work on her team, would probably tell you she's only been at it for three years. They would say she's not all that extraordinary. She's just willing to do extraordinary things. That's the deal. None of us have to come to work being extraordinary. We become extraordinary. When people like you give us the freedom, give us the confidence, equip us with the choices, the tools, the resources, to do whatever it takes.